Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cozy Corner. Today, it's a little bit different. You aren't seeing my face. It's me talking to you through a voiceover. <laughs> um, I thought I'd take you on a little tour of my bookshelves. I have yet to do a bookshelf tour on BookTube, so I figured why not? Uh, a few things before we get started. Um, I have three sets of shelves and they are all relatively small. Therefore, I have to be pretty flexible with which books I keep. So every year in January, I evaluate all of the titles on my shelves and decide which ones I want to keep and which ones I want to donate. So in this video, I will let you in on the current titles on my main shelves, my monthly TBR shelves, and my miscellaneous shelves. Also, at the end of this video, I will clue you in to some of my favorite things I keep on hand in the cozy corner for some marathon reading sessions. So grab a mug of something yummy and settle in for some talk of books. So I have moved all of the decorations off of my favorite shelf. This is my favorite shelf. Welcome to my all-time favorite books. Most of them are series. I have one standalone currently that will become a series later on. <laughs> um, but these are the series that changed my life, changed the way that I read, and for the foreseeable future will be the ones where all of my five-star books sit. So let's start from left to right. First we have Artemis Fowl by Owen Culver. If I had to pick a series that was my all-time favorite, it would be this one. <laughs> um, I have all of them in paperback except for the last two, um, and this oh, its just so incredible. I could talk about it for hours, but for now I'll just tell you the titles. <laughs> I have Artemis Fowl, Artemis Fowl and the Arctic Incident, Artemis Fowl and the Eternity Code, Artemis Fowl and the Opal Deception. I love this cover, it's so stunning. Artemis Fowl and the Lost Colony. This audiobook is probably my favorite out of all of them. Artemis Fell and the Time Paradox. I don't know if you can tell by the severely damaged cover. <laughs> this is my all-time favorite book in the entire series. Artemis Fell and the Atlantis Complex. And the final installment of the series, Artemis Fell and the Last Guardian. Next, we have the only five-star book I read in 2020 gracing my favorite shelf. It is so iconic. The amount of times I've recommended this to people is insane. <laughs> this is Borage by Gil McKnight. It is the first book in the Plague Tree Coven series and I am 100% when October hits hunting down more because it's so good. Next I have the Ranger's Apprentice series by John Flanagan. I don't currently have all of them just because when I first read them they were from my public library and so over the years I've been slowly adding them to my collection but the ones I currently have are the first and second which is uh, the original duology of the series with the Ruins of Gorlin and the Burning Bridge and uh, I also have number four the Battle for Scandia. What kind of fantasy lover would I be if I didn't have one of the fathers of fantasy on my shelves? I have the entirety of the Chronicles of Narnia. Actually, my first one is missing, but I just haven't put it back on my shelves because I loaned it to someone and they returned it. So praise be to people who actually return the books that you loan them. <laughs> um, I actually used to have multiple sets of these, um, including some special edition individual copies, but I have over the years gifted them to people who either have never read the series or um, wanted... Um, a favorite of theirs um, in a special edition for birthdays and Christmases, and I didn't really need six series of it, so <laughs> um, I donated or gave away all of those, and I kept my favorites, which were the ones I got from the Scholastic Book Fair when I was in middle school, um, and they are the uh, beautiful pointillism uh, soft illustration on the cover, and it's so gorgeous. Um, but I do have the entire series. The Magician's Nephew is missing, um, and then I have Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Horse and His Boy, which is my favorite out of the series, Prince Caspian, the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, The Silver Chair, which is probably my second favorite, and The Last Battle. And the final series I have on my favorite shelves is, of course, the Tiger's Curse series by Colleen Houck. Um, you might have seen this when I did the vlog with my mom where we swapped favorite books. I had her read Tiger's Curse. This is so good. It was the epitome of my high school time. <laughs> uh, it's so good. Um, so I have, of course, all four. I have Tiger's Curse, Tiger's Quest, which is my favorite out of the series, Tiger's Voyage, which is probably my second favorite. And the final installment, Tiger's Destiny. I actually do have the prequel for this series, but it is on my TBR. I'm hoping to get to it at some point at the end of the year or maybe early next year. Now we have come to the first shelf of my large bookcase, the Halo Trilogy by Alexandra Adonetto. Starting with Halo, Hades, and Heaven. Next we have the Princess Academy Trilogy by Shannon Hale. I actually had to uh, hunt for these a little bit. My dad actually found them for me. They were some of my favorites in middle school. But the first is the Princess Academy, Palace of Stone, and the Forgotten Sisters. 
And on the bottom of that stack, I have my Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo with Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. Next, I have The Traitor's Kingdom by Aaron Beatty. This is actually the third in the trilogy, and I accidentally bought this third one and read it almost the entire way through before realizing that this was the finale to the trilogy, so I am definitely needing to buy the first two because the third one was really good. And I have The Selection by Kira Cass. Next, I have The Brother Band Chronicles, which is the spin-off series from The Ranger's Apprentice by John Flanagan, and I have... I believe all of them now, I just haven't read all of them or I haven't shelved the ones that I've read this year, but I have the first three on my shelf, which are The Outcasts, The Invaders, and The Hunters. Next, I have Redwall by Brian Jakes. Um, this isn't necessarily a series, more just individual stories in one universe, and I have several that I've read over the past uh, few months that I will shelve at the end of the year, but the ones I have finished and are on my shelves are the original Redwall, Salamandastron, The Bellmaker, and High Lane, which was the last one I read um, in the past year. If any of you are familiar with the Shannara Chronicles, this is chronologically, in what terms of what happens in the books, the first trilogy of that series. So this is the Word in the Void trilogy by Terry Brooks. We have Running with the Demon, A Knight of the Word, and Angel Fire East. Next we have A Wrinkle in Time trilogy by Madeline Engel with A Wrinkle in Time, A Wind in the Door, and A Swiftly Tilting Planet. Next, um, on the shelf, I have the Reawakened Trilogy by Colleen Hawk. Same author who wrote Tiger's Curse. This is just a uh, second series. Reawakened, Recreated, and Reunited. This is the second shelf of my main bookcase. And just like the other two, we're gonna move from left to right. I, of course, have the entirety of the Harry Potter series as well as The Cursed Child. A little bit of an unpopular opinion, but Order of the Phoenix, I think, is my favorite book and movie. Also, I just found the little card with my Wi-Fi information as a bookmark in this book. <laughs> Next, I have Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This cover is gorgeous. It was the inspiration for my Halloween costume last year. It's so good. Then I have The Bear and the Nightingale by Katherine Arden. Next, I have The Dark is Rising sequence by Susan Cooper with Oversea and Understone, which is my favorite of the series. The Dark is Rising, which is the only one that's been made into a major motion picture. However, I think all of these would be iconic as movies. Greenwich, The Grey King, and Silver on the Tree as the final. Next, I have uh, part of the Warp series by Owen Colfer, who did write Artemis Fowl. This is actually, I think, the second one. Um, we got it on accident because I didn't realize it wasn't the first one. Um, but this is The Hangman's Revolution. And then one of my favorite standalones of Owen Colfer is Airman. I think it's so good. It's an excellent sort of bridge between middle grade and introduction to YA. It's so good. Next, I have the 100 Cupboards trilogy by Andy Wilson. This is one of my favorites too. Um, I am missing the second one because I lost it at a drive-in movie theater once and I'm still mad about it. <laughs> but the first one is 100 Cupboards and the finale is Chestnut King. And then the last fantasy book I have on my shelves is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I have the entire collected works of Edgar Allan Poe in a beautiful leather cover with gold uh, foil. My grandfather actually got me this for Christmas one year. It's so gorgeous. It's probably one of my favorite presents I've ever gotten. Speaking of Poe, I love him a lot. <laughs> um, I have a shorter version of his collected works um, that includes some of his more well-known stories with uh, The Pit and the Pendulum, which is my favorite and absolutely scarred me when we watched it in middle school. I have The Behemoth, that is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas, Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden, my much-worn, much-loved inherited copy of A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, I have a book of Irish fairy tales compiled by Jeremiah Curtin, and what compilation collection wouldn't be complete without a Reader's Digest <laughs> anthology, which is the world's best fairy tales. There are a lot of really cool different versions of the classics in this. And then lastly, tucked away in this little corner, I have my uh, incomplete collection of the series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. Um, I started collecting this particular uh, editions of these uh, a while ago, and I've been slowly adding them to my collection. Um, but I do have the first one, The Bad Beginning, Reptile Room, Wide Window, and The End. And on my bottom shelf is kind of a hodgepodge collection of things. I have The Bourbon Kings by J.R. Ward, The Carpet People by Terry Pratchett, The Secrets of My Hollywood Life by Jen Kalanita. Underrated book. It was so good. Moving in a little to middle grade, we have Goose Chase by Patrice Kindle. 
Baby Island by Carol Ryrie Brink, Mr. Pudgeons by Ruth Christopher Carlson, my autographed copy of Frindle by Andrew Clements. This is probably one of my most um, prized bookish items <laughs> um, because I got to meet him at a faith and writing conference that I went to and he was amazing. Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lundgren, The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart, and one of my all-time favorite middle grades, Rutabaga Stories by Carl Sandburg. Next, I have The Adventures of Hazel Weston series by Paula Montgomery with Canyon Girl, Valley Girl, Hood River Girl, and In Grandma's Footsteps. I have The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chi, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Barrett, Revolution by Jennifer Donnelly. This is also excellent if you love sort of a thriller historical fiction. Speaking of historical fiction, I have Golden Lion by Wilbur Smith, The Barbary Pirates, which is part of the Ethan Gage Adventures by William Dietrich, my much-loved copy of The Clue of the Broken Locket by Carolyn Keene, which is my favorite Nancy Drew mystery. Then I have some more lighthearted comedy stuff that I always like to read when I need some cheering up with Why Grizzly Bears Should Wear Underpants by The Oatmeal. I love The Oatmeal. It's probably my favorite cartoonist. Things Your Mother Always Told You But You Didn't Want to Hear. This doesn't really have an author. It was just someone putting together a collection of mom-type sayings. I have P.S. I Hate It Here, which is kids' letters from camp, selected and edited by Diane Falanga. I used to work at a church camp, summer camp, for many a year, and so this is supremely funny to me. And then some light comedy humor to get me through my college times. I have F in exams, the very best totally wrong test answers by Richard Benson. I have a little bit of YA romance with The Summer I Turned Pretty Trilogy by Jenny Han. I have The Summer Hill Secrets book one by Beverly Lewis. I also have book two. Next I have some uh, Christian historical romance books um, by Karen Whitmire with Stealing the Preacher, Short Straw Bride, Head in the Cloud, A Tailor Made Bride, and To Win Her Heart. Moving on I have some kids books. Kind of hard to see with the shadow but He Came with the Couch by David Slonim. Curious You on Your Way by H.A. Ray. I got this when I graduated high school from my church. A great big ugly man came up and tied his horse to me. Uh, illustrated by Wallace Tripp, um, which is a book of nonsense verse that has sort of existed for a long time. I have The Story of Ruby Bridges by Robert Coles. This is probably one of my favorite books to read as a kid, and I had the privilege of going to visit the Little Rock Nine school um, a few years ago, and it's a very similar story, and I just remember it sticking out to me a lot, and so my mom actually dug through my old books and found it for me, so now I have it in my collection. I had to open up the cover of this book because it doesn't have any illustration on the front, um, but this is Quest by Aaron Becker. It is a Taiwanese, um, no words storybook um, that I got in Taiwan when I was in college, and it's gorgeous illustration. So that concludes my main bookshelf. <laughs> this is my hanging bookshelf where I keep my planned months TBR. Obviously I don't get to all of these in one month, I wish, but this is where um, all of the books that I'm planning to read in the near future are stored. On this shelf I tend to keep my more um, religious faith-based uh, books. So I have His Princess Love Letters from Your King by Sherry Rose Shepard. This is just a uh, devotional that I used to do. Startling Joy by James Shop. This is a Christmas uh, devotional. More devotionals. I have A Year with C.S. Lewis, uh, obviously by C.S. Lewis, which is just a daily devotion from all of his writings. I got that for graduation from high school. Next, I have Pastrix by Nadia boltz -Weber. This is also autographed. Met her at the same conference that I did Andrew Clements. One of my all-time favorite memoirs, which is A Million Miles in a Thousand Years by Donald Miller. This is the guy who wrote Blue Like Jazz, and this is all about the process of um, living a better story, but also the making of Blue Like Jazz into a movie. Dangerous Wonder by Michael Iaconelli and Love Does by the one and only Bob Goff. This shelf is my potential TBR shelf. I'm not gonna take you through everything that's on here just cause I really only wanted to show you the books that I've read and enjoyed, um, but it is packed full um, and I am hopefully slowly gonna be able to work my way through that later on in the year. Right below my TBR shelf um, are some of my college writing textbooks. The one that I am the most fascinated with though is called Words by Paul Dixon. And it literally is just a bunch of random obscure words that we don't use anymore. Um, weirdly great for world building and thinking of names for countries, just as some writerly inspiration. If you guys want a full tour of um, the books that I use for writing, please let me know. I do actually use these quite often when I do practice writing, so if you want to know, let me know. And on this shelf is my poetry and plays. Uh, shelf and I have a bunch of stuff in here that I really enjoy. Uh, the one and only uh, Genius Bo Burnham with Egghead or You Can't Survive on Ideas Alone. It's so good. 
This is Sinner's Welcome by Mary Carr. Also, if you want incredibly honest um, poetry on faith and life, um, it's really awesome. I have Open Ground by Seamus Haney, who is probably my favorite poet. And I have Human Chain, another collection of his poems. If you want a deep, dark wormhole into uh, British literature, <laughs> I would recommend the Fairy Queen series by Edmund Spencer. Um, incredibly vivid detail, but very dense. <laughs> I kept it only because it was such a slog to get through and I didn't want to throw it away because I'd worked so hard to get through it. <laughs> Weirdly, one of the best things I ever read in college was Paradise Lost by John Milton. I loved it a lot. I didn't read all of it, but I am hoping to, at one point, um, get through Paradise Lost and then read Paradise Regained. And then because I do work in Christian education, I keep this uh, collection of A Treasury of Christian Poetry with inspiring and beloved poems compiled by Mary Bachelor just good for devotions and teaching and that kind of thing. Moving on to the place, I have Life with Mother Superior by Jane Trey and Anna Helen Reuter, Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, The Hound of the Baskervilles, which I was actually in in high school by Kent R. Brown. Obviously, it's inspired by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. If Today is the First Day of the Rest of My Life, I'm in Real Trouble by James L. C. A. I have The Truth About Cinderella, which is actually a musical based on the Cinderella Complex by Sir Osbert Sitwell. And I have A Haunting We Will Go by Tim Kelly, which I was also in in high school. On the very bottom shelf isn't really a whole lot. It's my old cat uh, textbooks from when um, I owned cats and when I used to show cats for 4-H, which is an actual thing that I used to do. Um, and I loved it a lot, but I don't have them anymore so, or cats anymore. So um, I keep them on the bottom shelf just in case in the future. And then I just have a few uh, cookbooks over there on the right because I do eat with a kidney conscious diet. So I just keep them there as um, a way for me to get good meals. So that about wraps it up for my bookshelf tour. However, before I go, I wanted to show you some of my favorite things that I keep in the cozy corner and some of my favorite things to set the atmosphere when I read, um, just to kind of give you a better idea of the things I like to do in the cozy corner. One of my favorite things uh, in the cozy corner is a gift I actually got from my grandma. Um, this is the poem Books by Eloise Greenfield and it's on a bookmark and I just keep it up here um, on my favorite shelf because it reminds me of her. Another one of my favorite things I like to keep near my cozy corner are my book lover soy candles. They are a little on the pricey side, but they are some delicious smell. This one I have burning today is Old Books, which is aged paper, dust, and vanilla. Uh, it smells so good. It's very mild. It's beautiful. Um, and then I have uh, Rainy Day Reads, which is probably my favorite of the three, which is Fresh Rain, Ginger, and Lavender. And then this one, which smells like the most delicious man you've ever smelled in your life, um, is mahogany, leather, and coffee. This one is very punchy, so I only light it for a short amount of time in a large area. <laughs> I always make sure to keep a little jar of highlighters and markers. I have my uh, dry erase marker from Book March Madness that I keep over here. And over here is my other little glass jar of bookmarks uh, down here on the bottom. I don't know if you can see them. They're the ones I use most often. They're the magnet ones that are in pastel Hogwarts house colors. I use purple most often because I am a Ravenclaw. Um, and then I have um, wood bookmarks, metal bookmarks, fabric bookmarks, pretty much any bookmark for any season. I have a few Halloween ones in there that I'm going to get out for when I decorate my shelves for fall, but I just pick one that matches the atmosphere of the book I'm reading. I have two book resources for my books um, <laughs> that I keep near my cozy corner at all time. Um, they're really awesome. This is Ex Libris, 100 Books to Read and Reread by Machiko Kakutani. And um, in here, I'll show you a little bit of the inside. So beautiful. So in here is information about... Oh, I freaking love her. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna get distracted by all the people I love in here. Um, so this has all of like the history of a bunch of famous authors and the works that they have written. So I'm if, if I'm going to pick up, oh, I just finished this. Oh, I just noticed this is in here. Um, also good. Okay, leave focus. Um, <laughs> um, I can go in and read more about the author and the descriptions of the books. Uh, it's just a great resource to have to better educate yourself about what you're reading. And then the other book resource I have that's a little less formal <laughs> uh, is the Call Me Ishmael phone book by uh, Steve, wow, Speakly, Stephanie Kent, and Logan Smalley. Um, this is kind of like Ex Libris, except it's an actual phone line that you can call and hear people's reviews about the books you've read. So this is just an example, but it's actually set up like a the Yellow Pages in a phone book. 
and so they have locations of libraries, bookstores in the states, and whenever you see like the extension number you call the uh, Ishmael phone line and you dial the extension and you can hear a review of this bookshop or um, a particular book and um, learn what other people are th saying about the things that you're reading. It's so awesome. It's probably my all-time favorite book item that I've ever owned in my entire life. <laughs> Something else I keep by me at the Cozy Corner at all times is one, this tray, which you've seen if you are on my bookstagram account. We'll see some of my photos on here. Um, but this is my commonplace notebook and I keep this close by. Let me turn it to the page. Here we go, here's August. I just posted about this also on my uh, bookstagram page. But I have all the titles that I finished. I need to add one more because I just finished one today actually. Um, and I put all my reviews here. Just one place for me to keep favorite quotes, things I liked. It's never far from me when I am reading. I am a person who absentmindedly snacks um, when I am reading. And so if I'm not careful, I overeat. Um, so I have this mug here, which is friend of the library and in it are sugar-free coffee where they're originals just to curb the snacking appetite. That's about halfway empty, if you can't tell. I go through those quickly. I also have scattered around my cozy corner another great small business candle company called the Firelight Fables Candle Co. Um, Casey is super awesome. I'm actually going to do a review of her pirate uh, line of candles. She does a fantasy-themed tabletop game uh, candles, and this one she did a Hogwarts line, and I am a Ravenclaw, like I said, so I got the Eagles Commons one. And then potentially probably my favorite part of Cozy Corner <laughs> is my coffee nook. I always have my hot pot full and ready to go. Um, I normally have my bookworm mug that you see in most of my booktube videos he hanging here. Um, and I have a King George one from Hamilton, but both of them are in the dishwasher at the moment. <laughs> um, but probably one of my favorite mugs of all time is the Great Mustaches mug. You'll notice that they are all numbered. That is because, so if you look at number one here, on the bottom is who made the mustache famous. So number one is Albert Einstein. I love the Unemployed Philosophers Guild. They have some great stuff. Um, and yeah, it's so cool. And I love the shape. I love mustaches. And that's pretty much it for my bookshelf tour. So thank you for joining me. If you uh, share any similar taste in books or you have read any of these that I have or um, would love to know more about um, the kinds of things I do to maintain my bookshelves, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I would love to have a chat with you about it. And until next time, cheers. Thank you.